told me I don't I didn't wish them any ill will, but the pastor God told the pastor that if oh, they my. didn't say who it was, that something horrible was gonna happen to their family. So I was saying it out of concern for their families. I just I uh What the fuck? Oh my <laughs> god. That is so wild. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so, COVID. COVID like, is making people go insane, I swear to God. What else can I say other than welcome to HR? Oh, yes, God. Seriously. Listen, I, I've i seen pretty crazy HR shit because I've been working inside of HR for the past five years. But this tops it all. This, like, I can't match that. Oh, I'll give you a close second. Three weeks ago, uh, a doctor was dating one of the nurses. Uh, the nurse the nurse apparently cheated on uh, che he cheated on her and the doctor went and called me in the morning because in the company property she went with a baseball bat and destroyed his car but she what? called a charge so she didn't get in trouble oh my god what the fuck I want I want to say that again she called a charge so she didn't get into trouble. That is wild. I'm so baffled. Uh, we're live, by the way. Oh, um, oh, okay. I didn't know we were doing the full shmang. Well, we weren't, okay. but Lane wanted to watch, so we oh, are. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, doing this for my girlfriend, because she, yeah, she yeah. is invested in this campaign and wants to know how it yeah. ends. Yeah, and you're biased. She's my girlfriend, Because you Leo. love her. I Hello? Know. I know, I'm doing it on purpose because I don't know if she's listening. Uh, I love you too, Ling. She is. She's in <laughs> chat. Um, so yeah, this is going to be... Uh, obviously, we're not playing normal D&D today. Um, the campaign is ending uh, because I just... I, I don't have it in me to continue it. And I owe it to my players to, uh, to not trudge them through uh, me just being so tired and trying to press to the end so uh this is gonna be uh, just a loose wrap up um uh, and stuff uh I, my name is tam the dm uh leah plays thane hazel plays yeah yeah, yeah. uh tarina nope soda plays, plays tarina tarina <laughs> plays soda and, and now the place snowy. snowy yeah Oh yeah, no, I got this right! Fuck it! That's what people want to hear. Snowy. I wanted to be snowy. wrong. I was like, Snowy plays Nando, but I, I didn't. I think they are the same people, really. <laughs> um, but no worries, because um, we will be starting a new campaign next week, hopefully. Um, so, uh, without further ado, basically, base uh what I want to uh, start off first is... Um, because uh, there's a lot of, like, secrets and shit that I just want to give you guys. But, uh, I want to see what you might have questions about and just answer those first. And if you touch on the stuff that I, the secrets that I have, then excellent. And if you don't, then I can just go back and give you those. So, uh, that's The what only question that matters to me is Zephyrin is Mephistopheles. That's the only. <laughs> that's, that's what we're I'll starting? I'll kill you. Okay. That's all I um, want to know. No, I'm joking. Okay, uh, so yeah, we can start there, absolutely. Um, Zephyrin is not Mephistopheles. Damn it! Uh, no, he is not. Um, <laughs> he also is not working with or for Mephistopheles. Damn it! Oh my no way. Way. He has thought this entire time that his visions, his goals, were being granted to him by the Dawnfather, but it has been Mephistopheles slowly... See? Seeping into and influencing his mind, posing as I the Dawnfather. I wasn't all wrong. I'm so happy. Some of my theories were right. Thank you. Tim, yeah, yeah. So anything. he's not. So he's not intentionally working with. No. Me. No, he's but not. He, he has is. no idea. Uh, he has no idea. Uh, so yeah, yeah, there. That burning question is answered. You're welcome. Any other Thank questions? Thank you. No. <laughs> and you know what? Thank you for not making the evil guy for the sake of being evil. I appreciate that. Yeah. Of course. Come on now. You know what I want to know, Tim. You know if I want to know if I could do the one fucking thing that I was going to okay. do this motherfucking campaign. Um, so, okay, so yeah, I'll answer that. I would, and since you guys don't really seem to have any uh, burning questions, then you guys can do your, your own epilogue afterwards. Uh, we'll just, we'll I'm just... sorry, I do have a question. Yeah, what's that? It's no gay. You gotta, you gotta say it. 
I don't. You tell me, bud. I don't know. Does he explore? That is a question does that does I he explore had. those options? My fan it's base okay. has, been, <laughs> has, been, has been asking me nonstop, and I your don't fan know. base, your fan don't base. Don't well, it's your character. Is he gay? Well, you know, let's just say that let's just say that Brad Pitt came into the picture. You know, Jesus uh, Christ tries to forcibly kiss me. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that Snowy would not lean in. <laughs> right. So maybe <laughs> he's guy. Really yeah, maybe he's a little bi. Maybe he's pan. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe because just... sometimes he's we curious. devise a character. Yeah. So when I created Thane, I wanted him to be very open, but he turned out to be very straight. So I kind of have to go. But he's not judgmental. He has all the gay guys hitting on him, and he's okay with that. But, you know. Did nobody catch that? Did nobody watches The Office here? No. No. I no, I don't watch shows. I I haven't seen The Office in so long. I'm sorry. Our <laughs> Snowy does is gay. He's gay. Um... I love this lane. <laughs> Well, we just answered that one. Maybe he might be a little bi curious, um, which is totally I love this totally for cool. Him. Maybe he's he very valid. Maybe he explores Same. a little bit. Uh, and any, anyways, um, so yeah, basically we'll just uh, we'll just like wrap it up in, in a chronological order. Uh, Jojo and I'm, um not a lot. Like it, it wasn't a huge arc. It was just me trying to tie up a loose end that I placed within the campaign, <laughs> literally session three. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. Um, it it would have ended with um, uh, a a really uh, kind of oh how do I say this tricky uh, ritual to kind of heal what was happening to the plane um, that if failed, which luckily most of you are really good with Arcana, but if it failed. Uh, it could have killed Sam, um, so. Oh, uh, not um, Sam. Sam yeah. it must be protected <laughs> forever. Yeah. Um, but given the fact that you guys are, uh, and I'm definitely doing this like a Telltale game. Like it, it probably is a happy ending uh, for everyone. But yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys would have finished that up. You would have left Jotunheim. Um, Keisler would have been berated. Uh, trying to get her to come to the center, but if she refused, um, then there would have been downtime, and things would have progressed. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, depending on what you did on your downtime, uh, if anyone thought to, like, I don't know, maybe do some investigating uh, about the fucking Keisler vision, um, then things might not have popped off so badly, but... Um, Basically, um, Zephyrin would go to uh, the crater that Thordek had created um, with the uh, Seed of Life. Uh, that is a artifact of the Dawnfather and the Arkheart mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, that he found in the Neverfields. Um, use the ritual that, uh, quote, the Dawnfather gave him. Uh, mm -hmm. To open up a tear in the divine gate and to bring him forward. Um, however, <laughs> it would yeah. not have been the Dawn Father. Instead, of it would have not. been an aspect of Mephistopheles. I'm so happy. Um, who. Uh, which the whole point. But I, I actually remind. The whole point of Kaiselor was to be a vessel for the Dawn Father when he came to, um, to Exandria. But because she moved on and was like, no, fuck that. I don't want to have anything to do with Children of the Dawn. Uh, her replacement, uh, the new Keisler, Keisler 2 Electric Boogaloo, um, mm -hmm. would have been the vessel. However, and hopefully you guys would have arrived on the scene by this point, but however, um, both Tarina's brother and Thane's daughter, who were agents of Mephistopheles and were watching the ritual, uh, would kill this vessel and Thane's daughter would become Mephistopheles. Wow! Oh, cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> no, not cool, because then, you know, I would oh, have very to kill cool. her. Well, yeah, you know. Um, I know. I'm just so happy that my theory was not that far off. And this validates me so much. I had one question, Yes. Tim, and this is a suspicion. Did Cornelius have the sword? Yes, he did. And it was already awoken. Jesus. Yep. 
I um, w- w- when when Maros was like, I don't know. I was like, oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, he did. Uh, he definitely had it. Um. But to answer your question, Hazel. Mm-hmm. In this moment, when Zephyrin saw that his entire life was a lie, there would be a chance for Kaiselor to not strike him down, but instead forgive him. And in that, he wouldn't necessarily automatically become a good guy. No, of course. But he would try and and redeem himself with what time he has left. Bam! Fucking hell yeah! <laughs> um... Was there a chance to save Emine? Or was she gone, gone, gone? Fortunately, at that point, Thane, the reason he started out on his quest to begin with, would have to kill his own daughter. Uh, what about Cornelius? He was not as far gone. Um, well, I say far gone. Emine... What soul she had remaining inside of her, it, it would have been absorbed by Mephistopheles. So there was yeah, and a... also the the time because yeah. elf Yeah. Compared to the time that her brother was in the in the uh essence yeah. like not essence in the presence and, and the mm-hmm. influence of Mephistopheles compared to the time that his daughter was. So we're talking about sixty years, seventy years yeah. and that in a plane of the devil is even more so. Yeah. Uh, but I like, like I, when I was approaching the backstory, I, I actually t- told um, Soda that during the week, as we were talking about tying some things up together, I never wanted a happy ending fully. What I wanted was always the realization that yes, Time is a different thing for an elf, but there's so much you can accomplish and you have to take those small moments and cherish them because they might be temporary, but the temporary parts of your life make what your life is. And I was approaching on my end the possibility that his daughter was far gone, but he accomplished happiness with his wife, with the two girls that he kind of adopted as his daughters. So the whole life that he was stuck in blaming himself for her being gone, he made up in other ways. So I'm totally okay. And I was like, he was like very pragmatic and he would totally have done it. Yeah. Yeah, It it would hurt him. Yeah. But he would have done it. Um, to answer your lane, answer your lane question. To answer your question, lane, no, Sam was not evil, <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> no, he's just the best. I don't. <laughs> he he literally uh, came willingly to Jotunheim to try and help them. Um, like no, he's he's not evil. He... Good boy, sweet boy. Um, uh, just... just he's just an impish sort. Mm. Yeah, right. Uh, however, that would not be the end of the campaign because, however, there was a chance you guys could have defeated. Uh, Cornelius uh, and Mephistopheles inhabiting Emine's body, you probably were not going to. Um, and if you did try to fight to the end, it probably would have been a TPK. Most likely. Mm-hmm. Um, Holy shit. But if you did get really lucky and almost defeat them, they would try and, and bamf. And uh, Cornelius would constantly be casting high-level spells to try and burn you guys' counter spells. So if they did get to the point where they had to leave, they could teleport out, and you would have no more counter spells. Um, so, there was, there was a whole plan. And I guess you guys are fucking counter spell party. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it... Uh, because I don't have an original thought in my body, the final fight would actually happen in Vasselheim. Uh, Lies. That is where, because although you guys did stop Keisler's vision from coming to pass by, uh, by because you guys knew something was going to happen in Amon, um, and you would stop them from destroying Amon, 
right when Mephistopheles got here. Mephistopheles instead turned his vision towards, obviously, the holy yeah. city. Yeah. <laughs> the question I would have on that, uh, so you're saying that if we were, like, you're saying if we were too late to stop him from getting to Amade's body, then we would have to fight or they would have to leave. But there was a chance to stop the ritual from happening? There was, yeah. You could have got there before it started, but that's why I'm saying, like, if if you had taken the time during uh, the downtime... Um, here's the thing, it was it was a domino effect. Um, had Kaiselor gone to the dinner, which yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Hazel had any inclinations of doing that, um, but if you did, uh, you could have been tipped off that there was going to be a ritual in the crater, so you could have gotten there sooner and stopped the ritual from ever happening. Um, but you would have had to fight the Children of the Dawn, all of them, um, mm -hmm. and you would never, ever in that timeline, have a chance to redeem Zephyrin. You would have had to kill him. Damn. So um, it was either saving Zephyrin or saving Iman. I'm confused, like, because... Um, I think in my head, I feel like I needed to understand how we could have a happy ending, let's say. How can we stop this from happening? So the only way would be to allow them to bamf away? Or would that be another way for us to stop? No, no, no. If, if, you, if you guys got lucky and killed them, um, well, then that would be the end. Of, that'd be the end. I mean, you, you win. You beat Mephistopheles. Congratulations. Um, yeah. But if you tried to fight to the end and you weren't lucky, it would have been. A t it probably would have been a TPK. Um, the Mephistopheles stat block is enormous and scary. Yeah. Um, yeah the it's like Tiamat. It's like Tiamat. Yeah. Um, could we have stopped at least Cornelius from bamfing away in particular? Uh, you could have tried. Uh, there is there is hope for him though. Like if if you were to kill MNA. Um, and essentially destroy that aspect of Mephistopheles. Um, Cornelius would he would have no way to get back to Cania. Um, so it would be it would be a hard it would be a very hard journey. But you could eventually, you know, rewrite all the devil programming in his brain. Um, about so. Would you say that that fight would be like the equivalent of what uh, Vox Machina had with Vecna? Because yeah. they could have really TPK'd, but they managed to work it out and they won in the end and became heroes. Basically, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, that that was also like the like the final showdown, too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. But this part was never supposed to be the final showdown. It was either the final showdown with the Children of the Dawn, or Mephistopheles sets foot in the Prime Material Plane... And you guys have to figure out a way to destroy him. Especially after actually fighting him and seeing, holy fuck. Ugh. Um, but the actual final fight uh, that I had planned, if you didn't kill them in Amon, uh, was in Vasselheim. Oh, I see. I uh, see what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, right. However, unlike Vecna slowly trudging his way to Vasselheim, Mephistopheles would have just teleported directly into the center of it and turned it into Elsa's Wonderland. Just immediately. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> um, there would be no more Vasselheim. You would have fought in the icy grave of where Vasselheim once was, with pe damn. people, ice statues of people standing in the street just going about their business because it would have happened so fast, so rapidly. No one would have seen it coming. So. That's fucking crazy. Got it. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then... Yeah. So that would be... That, that is the ending I planned on the most. However, there was a chance that you just stopped the Children of the Dawn. And that was it. Uh, huh. Yeah. But Damn. Because Kaislor showed no inclination or want to go to that dinner, I figured that yeah. would not that would not be the the end of the story, so 
Yeah, um, thank God. Good Lord. The, um, uh, the other things that I was thinking is more pertaining to Thane. Like, did you have anything planned on how he would get rid of when Huen Rillis in his head? Uh, yes, actually. Um... Funny thing about having a consciousness live in your brain. Um, sometimes your own subconscious influences them. Um, and Hunerillus's Thane's pragmatism, for instance, would have been rubbing off on him this entire time. Um, oh, so I would be redeeming him. Look at that. That's okay. You would be subconsciously redeeming him. Redeeming um, him. So... Before the final fight in Vasselheim was to begin, Hunerillus would have a long conversation with Thane and essentially kill himself. Oh, wow. And That is a lot better than what Thane had in mind. <laughs> it, it would exalt your vestige. Shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. Do you have the stats for the Exalted? I'm so <laughs> curious. Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, I, Could I see the stats for uh, Runequill, too? Of course. Yeah, because, like, you know that sometimes I take, uh, uh, I take spells for roleplay reasons, and I took Magic Jar because that was, like, Thane thinking this could be a way for me to get rid of him, but he would he would go through a lot of uh, studying to make sure that his consciousness was not the one being pushed into the jar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I was like, I'm pretty sure. I, I mean, I know Tim by now. I know how he DMs. He has a solution, but I have to do this for role play reasons. You know? Um, but yeah, there, that's the exalted. Sahandrian. Sahandrian. Uh, Let yeah. me see. The bonus to attack and damage rolls is increased plus three. When you roll initiative and have oh, more uses of your blade song, you gain one. Beauty. Beauty. That's great. Uh, I love this story, though. I love, I love the, uh, uh, I love the, uh, the idea that I redeem who I really is by being myself. Yep. So, Very like, good. there's a bit of a redemption storyline there. I love that much more than just, you know, trying to push him out. Yeah, no, that's, that's delicious. That's great. That's, that's, that's really great. Um, uh, so, that would essentially be the end of the campaign. Uh, you guys would obviously be heroes of Taldor. You know, if we lived. Uh, if you yeah. lived, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you lived. Um, but, uh, yeah, it would have been pretty cool. It would have been pretty fun. God um, damn. And, uh, we were really close. I just, uh, my, I, I couldn't do it to my mental health any longer. So, uh, yeah, so, I, so I, I do oh, apologize about that. But, Thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean... Any other questions or anything you guys want to say, like what your characters would do if you did survive this final fight? Oh yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> um, before you get to that, uh, anyway. I, I don't want to interrupt you, Tim, but could I see that stat block, please? Stat block of what? For, For Runequil. Runequil. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's on my D and D Beyond. I have to. I'll do it. I don't actually have it in the game. Damn. Uh, <laughs> I can start if you guys want. Yeah, go I for it. Um, yeah. So I had thought that, uh, so in my head, I was going through the different ways that the final thing would affect Thane, especially with his daughter and he was mentally preparing to having to kill her because he is a very down to earth pragma pragmatic guy who doesn't live in the clouds. So he, he knew that was a great possibility with all that. He would have done it and that would have awakened in him, uh, uh like a lot of internal 
thought about how he used to be and he would after saving Iman of course he would uh, get as old uh, just spend the time with her that he didn't have a chance to spend with his wife his first wife and and try to make uh, come up with a family and I would love for them to have babies at least one um <laughs> Because the whole point would be, and the whole point of this character, he would die alone. And that was something that I was talking to Tarina about, to Tarina, to Soda about, when we were trying to interchange a, a bit. Like, she, uh, he wanted to ask me if, if Thane could be a part of Tarina's, and of course, he would still be a part of Tarina and Kaiselor and Zoe's life. Uh, more the girls, because he kind of, like, adopted the uh, them in a way in his need to be a father that he hadn't been for so long he saw those two girls who needed fa uh, like a father figure and he yeah. just put himself there and became that for good and for bad uh, but he would totally still be around and being a part of their lives um, but at some point uh, he would have wanted to have a child of his own with his old Knowing very well that is he would be so young and healthy while Isolde would die of old age. So he would bury her. Um, his half-elf child will live for a longer time, but he would bury them. He would make sure that his whole family had ancestors. At some point, I wanted him to return to Maythor. And kind of grow into the leadership of Maythor and kind of become the, the chieftain of Maythor to open a little bit more. And because Maythor was very closed and very um, uh, segregated, they a lot of people in, in Taldor didn't even know they existed. He would open a little bit more, start a trade. And, and, and because after meeting those people and traveling, he realized that something to be gained by not being isolated but he would also keep uh he would keep the traditions of his people and right before he feels like like thousands not thousands but hundreds of years in the future he would have done the ritual to become an ancestor himself so down the line when his uh bloodline because the only bloodline he had was Emine. That's why he would want to have half elf children with um, with his old, and he would go through the rituals and teach them the rituals. So when his great 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 grandchild appeared, he would become what Kalreth was to him, mm -hmm. and but not in the way that Kalreth was. He wanted to be an ancestor that would accept the choices of his his descendant and would build on top of that. Um, but eventually, yes, he, when he died, he would die alone, uh, perhaps, uh, with one of his ancestors by his side. Um, and that would be his, his, the rest of his, uh, existence being an ancestor spirit and a guide to his bloodline. Um, that is like on a, on a overall basis and and having to deal with the fact that you can enjoy the happiness even though you're an elf that will outlive everyone you can still take those moments and cherish them and they don't have to be sad so when Tarina passed or passed or Kaiser passed or Snowy passed or even Matrados if they got to meet again when those people passed he would grieve grieve but he would also have learned that yes their lives are shorter but that doesn't mean they're less interesting or less intense or less beautiful so that would be a lesson that he would take and that was that would be what exactly would push him to actually do the ritual and become an ancestor spirit so he could be a part of everyone's life in a way in his bloodline oh, really? that's what I had planned that is so beautiful yeah. Wow. It's really nice. Yeah, I never planned to be a happy ending. Oh, you know, I'm gonna 
he he will outlive everyone. He will bury everyone he loved. That was always the plan. I didn't want him to, which was so beautiful when he actually fell for his old, who's a human, because if he had fell fallen for an elf, it would be less impactful. Mm. Right, yeah. right. That's it for me. Damn. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I, to, to, uh, add on to that, um, Isolde absolutely would want children. Maybe not right away. Um, no. But, yeah, she, At she least one. Um, she would be absolutely overjoyed by the fact that Thane is ready to retire. Yeah. So she doesn't have to worry about him fucking oh, dying yeah. anymore. Oh, yeah. Um. He would have brought her to Maythor if she didn't mind the cold. <laughs> Because he wanted to go back home. Uh, that would be a conversation. Uh, yes, right. She mm. she really wants to finish her studies and then go back to her shop in Kaimel. Oh. Well, we could say that because she's so short-lived <laughs> compared to him. He would do that. And then yeah. once she passed, he would go to, to Minithor with their children. Uh, because yeah. she's, she is uh, born and raised and Kaimel, uh, and then she went to a, the Alabaster Lyceum to study, and then yep. came back to Kaimel to open up her general goods store. Um, so yeah, uh, when she finished her studies, she would uh, add on to her general goods store um, so she could have more space to enchant, because obviously her um, her skills have improved quite a bit. Oh, yeah. um, and she will open up a proper uh, magical item shop. Um... And Jeez, I love her. eventually, um, she would become a partner with uh, the glorious Gilmore. Gilmore? Gilmore? Oh, oh God. my fucking God. Glorious. Listen, my children would be owning the store. I better hear about my children's store in campaign three, two. Huh? <laughs> I better hear about that. Um, God damn hilarious. it. My but, yeah. family's legacy. After she did that, after she finished her studies and opened her shop back up and expanded it, uh, yeah, she would absolutely be ready to to have children with Thane, 100%. Yep. Um, yeah, he, he would have done that. He would have gone there and stayed with her and supported her, and when she passed, he would go and retreat and, and fix his land and take care of his people. Uh, and yeah, He would also finally learn about her family and that oh, wow. she doesn't have any. Uh, oh, wow. She was an orphan. She grew up in the oh, orphanage no. in Kaimel. Um, and uh, she would want three kids. That's fine. The more the merrier. Yeah. Um, because she never got to experience a big family. So. I'm uh, going to cry. I hate this. And Listen, the <laughs> more ancestors, the more Thane can be a guide to yeah. them in the future. So. And all of the Arcane Dawn will always be welcome at their shop in their home in Kaimel. Um, but yeah, that's that's a little secret you didn't know about Isolde, so there you go. Yay! I love this so much. I love her. I loved her from day one. <laughs> oh, I know! Uh, <laughs> Thane also loved her from day one. It this, was a journey. This man had no cruise where he's like, I'm a flirt. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm a flirt with my beautiful e charisma. No, night charisma. <laughs> oh, Fane, the good Fane, Fane's like this grunty kid. It's like, hey, I'm a good yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He liked her from day one, but he's terrible at this shit. And he, like, he never, like, when he married Emine's mom, it was an arranged marriage. Mm. So. When he married her, he didn't really have, like, oh, I love her, I'm marrying her. He married her because his whole culture said, we, we need people, we need ancestors, we know, we need uh, descendants. So they arranged his marriage with Emine's mom. He liked her, he, he, he didn't hate her, but he was not, never in love. But the moment he saw his old, that was like, I like this lady. I yeah. don't know what to do here. But I kind of do, and you know, in the end, it ended up working in very weird ways. But that is that is a memory that I will treasure forever. Yeah. Wholesome. 
Yeah, that was funny. Especially because, like, <laughs> Baladin, the, the, the gnome, oh was God. the original. Like, he was flirting with her to try to get discounts at the shop. And oh then, my then God. Thane was like, hey, wait, I want to flirt. Hey, yeah, he was like, uh, you're flirting with her, but I really kind of like her. And he failed completely. And then... <laughs> she took and then... A pity on him. Pity date. Oh, uh, pity date. <laughs> and then she got to know him. And she's like, well, you know what? This guy's kind of cool. I like him. Um, it's such a cute love story. I, I wouldn't have written it any other way, Tim. Uh, thank you for that. It was one of the Aww. first times I actually had my character having a relationship. And the way it was built, it was so pretty and so fantastic that I was like, you know, this is, this is great. And Thaladin with that nat 20. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Gosh. Oh, man. Good old times. Uh, Good old times. Can't believe that was almost three years ago. Oh gosh. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, you guys would have seen Jumbo again. He would have been a best time to help Yay! you fight. Oh my God, King! Uh, he was Yay! the only surviving member of the Slayer's Take who was in Vasselheim when it got iced over. Uh, Holy my God. shit! No. Z oh my God. Zara and Kashal were not in Vasselheim when it got iced over. They were in Whitestone, but. Fantastic. Uh, Jumbo was in Vasselheim, and he, because of his barbarian fortitude, survived the uh, the icing over. The Elsa, um, yeah. Yeah, so he would have uh, he would have helped you guys fight. God damn. Totally forgot about that. I'm reading my that notes. That is very here. cool. Um, yeah, excellent. That's I think that's a beautiful way for for Thane's story to conclude. Yeah. Agreed. Man. Damn. Yeah? Yeah. Alright, just because I'm dying to know. Snowy. Yeah, what the fuck is up with Snowy? <laughs> What's your epilogue? The, oh, do I get to do my thing now? Yeah. yeah. Do your thing. Yeah, it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, obviously, if there was a casualty in the last fight, it was going to be Snowy. Uh... He was going to be doing something that he should have made in the first place. Uh, really bad decision, too. If he were to have survived, however, uh, he would probably just call, just retire from adventure and all together. And all the fucking madness collected Dorlana. Uh, Dorlana was going to have my... I was going to give Dorlana my glaive. The, what, what was it called again, Tim? I forgot the name. Bright Shadow. Bright Shadow? Uh, hey, so it makes me look bad when you know the names of my weapons. Mm -hmm. and I don't... You should. I have feel an encyclopedic bad. knowledge of everything. Tim game. Don't don't she <laughs> look does. at me. Yeah, she, don't she forget Hazel is notes. the note taker. Yeah. yeah. Bro, yeah, I knew that. Uh, it's, it's, it's no new information on the last session for me. Definitely uh, not. Anyway, yeah, she was gonna be the carrier of my glaive. Uh, and I was potentially just gonna use put my my sword. I was gonna retire from adventure, just keep like a short sword or something stupid. Well, actually, I didn't even need a short sword. I got my claws, and I was gonna put my sword in exhibition behind the counter in the bar. That's uh, fantastic. Definitely not. I will never marry. Uh, however, I will have a lot of you know illegitimate children. Uh, <laughs> a lot of them. Jesus. A lot of them. Very responsible father. Definitely very responsible father. Uh, not taking care of any of them. Uh, there will be a runt at some point. I imagine a, a, a female tabaxi that will just, it will call me by Snowy. She will not call me father or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> she will call me by my face. It will be first name basis. And she will be pretty much my caretaker at some point. And she will run the bar, the Diamond Nest Tavern, after I do my aggressive takeover of the Diamond Nest Tavern. Uh, which was happening. It was happening eventually. I will incorporate entertainment <laughs> on it. And then I will divide the bar between all my family. All of them. That's uh, hilarious. Um, finally, I will die at a very young age. Definitely die at a very young age. I'm thinking about 40s or 50s, something like that. Uh, definitely die at a young age in a very, in a, in a, in a slightly embarrassing way. Uh, perhaps trying to do something. Uh, that I was definitely not able to do, but I was still trying to do it. Nonetheless, I will die in the process, and in my, I will have a New, New Orleans funeral in which I will 
explicit, uh, specifically say on my dying wish that is that Thane, Kaiselor, and Tari and Danaki get drunk. <laughs> like pissed fucking drunk <laughs> in my funeral. Oh, that my never god. happened in the campaign. Oh my gosh. I can only no. think of what would happen. They never drunk once. And yeah, the game. No. I wouldn't um, even do it if it was my dad, my last dying wish. I mean, Come I fucking hell yeah. No, he would. Yeah. No, as your dying wish, he would. I'm just saying, they never drank drank a bit of alcohol in three years because he didn't want to lose his mind. And I will literally say, oh my, I want them to drink until they piss themselves. That's literally gonna be right there. That okay? Oh my fucking <laughs> god. I will no, make sure that it's no Jesus right. Christ. I expected nothing less than this no. ball of chaos. No. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, of course, obviously, I will make terrible business decisions, but Dorlana was going to be there to fix them behind me. Uh, and the moment that I passed, my sword was going to go to whichever of my illegitimate daughters I like the best. They didn't necessarily have to be the one that took care of me, possibly the one that I like the best. Uh, and Dorlana was going to keep everything else. Nice. Wow. Uh, but the most burning question. Does Snowy fuck guys? <laughs> yes. Fuck Did guys? he and Sam <laughs> get together? I don't think he would. I think I think he will, it will be an eternal question that he will have. God uh, damn it. Uh... He will say at some point, I feel like he will say at some point to Kaiselor, he will grab her by the shoulders and say, I am not sure if I am gay, but just in case I am, there's no way that you can compete with all this. So go for it. <laughs> oh go for my it. fucking you. God. God. That is the world's funniest pep talk. Oh, so go for it. There's no way. Look at you. Look at me. Completely different levels. If I go for it, I go for it. You know what I'm saying, guys? Lord, I'm going to say, you know what I'm saying? So just, <laughs> just, and then immediately at that, around that time, this will be in the most inappropriate position possibly as well. In the most inappropriate time as well. Uh, it will be potentially when we're about to lose, you know, odds against us, Metistophilus in the air. And then I'm just going to use my entire turn to, th to talk to Keisler. I'm gonna That's use my fucking action, my hilarious. Action, my move action to talk to Keisler. <laughs> And tell her I'm um, gonna cry. That's fucking hilarious. That's so funny. It's very like MCU of you. It's just like in the middle of a giant battle and just start bantering about your sexuality. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm gonna say, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, I honestly, I'm not sure. Kaisler, I am really confused. Kaisel over here, like <laughs> being like, "Well, I'm biased. Fuck, get your shit together." Yeah, yeah, move it, bitch. <laughs> You can't compete with this, whore! <laughs> <laughs> oh, um... Kaisler becomes a harlot just to show Snowy that she is sexier than he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to touch on some stuff you said, Snowy. Um, with you constantly there, Tiernan lasts a month and then gives you his side of the business and fucking leaves. He cannot stand That is me. so fucking funny. Um, that, that's his appropriate, yes. You, yes, yes. you were an easy oh, business partner when you were always adventuring, but with you constantly being there, he cannot stand you. So he sells you his half of the business uh, at a discount and just leaves. And <laughs> deep, deep, dips out. Yeah. It's lost. <laughs> it's lost. Uh, I was gonna make uh, that diamond nest diamond an empire. Oh, this. that is so fucking funny. Also, depending on um, what Snowy would do with this, um, Dorlana was slowly getting feelings for Snowy. Um, oh no! So, oh no! You know, obviously seeing Snowy whore around, she'd probably be like, you know, what? better, better to just better not be friends. I guess that's fine. But um, like, what do you know? Yeah, it um, will be the one that got away. Yeah, it will be like, no, we're, you know, if if something happens, you know, it will be that kind of situation. I'm not even sure if I'm gay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even oh sure if I'm gay. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I'm gay. 
I will have the whole conversation about I never had a dick in my mouth, but I don't know if I like it. <laughs> Christ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a dick in your mouth to know that you're not gay. Oh Sometimes my god. It just happens. It just happens. It just... <laughs> what the I'm fuck? gonna piss my pants. Oh my god. How did we get here? Uh, snowy. Oh snowy god. is how we get How here. the hell did we save the world? I don't know. I think, I think, I don't know. I, I really don't. I do want to say that I was saving my uh, my automatic success for a Dragon Ball Z moment that I have really planned for like four sessions, <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't come about. Oh, uh, that the, is so fight, very funny. The fight which I saved, uh, which we saved the, the whole uh, my family and all that shit. I was thinking that the the fucking uh, what was it called, the Baron or whatever the fuck he was. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought that he was gonna be like a really big, awesome guy that we we're gonna have to defeat and shit. So I was saving my automatic success for getting hit. Uh, immediately after getting hit, just appear 40 feet over him, use my quick, uh, my sorcery point, which I was saving, by the way, to throw a fireball at him from, you know, midair, and then go and finish with a, with a divine smite on top of him and use my automatic success to hit. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. That's pretty dope, not gonna lie. That's some trunk shit. Yes, and I was potentially gonna say, dude, I had absolutely no plan about how to land. So any damage that you want to give me on that, I will take it gladly. God damn. Th just this moment straight up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's excellent. Um, uh, Snowy would quickly come to realize uh, that he cannot sustain a business um, when his, uh, his family comes to town. Uh, they put him back quite a bit. Uh, and he will probably have to eventually start charging them when they come to town because he loses uh, quite literally thousands of gold and food and booze uh, when they come. So, that's another thing. <laughs> naturally, naturally. And, and keep in mind that only two out of the six drink. But, yep. Though in our yep. himself, he, he can drink quite a bit, so... Um, additionally, uh, Snowy's mother does come and see him at, um, the Diamond S Tavern. Uh, she wants to pursue a relationship with her child, but whether Snowy wants that or not is up to him. Uh, he will, he will try to attempt it, uh, and for whatever reason, whenever his mother arrives, he will talk with an English accent. <laughs> and go, uh... All right, hit us with your best English accent. Go. Uh, so, well, mother, I will tell you right now that I'm actually... It's actually quite bollocks that you're here. <laughs> it's actually quite bollocks. That's... that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Well, I'm going to go get some water right now. Ta-ta. Oh, my God. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Holy um, shit. The English people say ta-ta, right? No, I'm yeah, not, I'm totally. Sure. I, I don't want. I don't want to take sure. over that. I don't want. I be... saw. I I heard Keisler say ta-ta like once a session at least. So yeah, of course, yeah. duh. Okay. Um, um that, that that's good because I you know I am I am Puerto Rican already. I know it's a certain level of racism. It's it's allowed when you're a minority. Oh my fucking god! But, <laughs> but I don't know what level of it. Jesus. Okay, um, <laughs> there you go. That's that's Snowy. He's gonna he's gonna fuck around, put a dick in his mouth, and uh, run a bar. No, he's um, not sure. No, he's he's not he sure. About, yeah. Well, he he has, to, he has to put sure. it in his mouth to know for sure. You know. Well, uh, the thing is that he doesn't want to put it in his mouth because what if he's not gay and then he put a dick in his mouth? He doesn't want to be a straight guy that put a dick in his mouth either. Oh my god. You know, it's it's a circle. It's a circle. It's, god, damn it. it's a circle of oh, gay. Just oh because god. I know... Put uh, that dick in your mouth. Her, I will throw this out. Yeah. Um, Tarina's son, I tell him. I use my ridiculous deception. To tell him every time I go visit that his real name is no, it's no false. <laughs> that is very funny. And then I give him candy and money. Hell oh yeah. god! All right. 
Um, okay, so and I are not gonna let it snow we next our children ever. Oh, absolutely yeah. not. Got it. Absolutely. Got it. He's sort of like, no, that yeah. man. That, oh, that, man that would be a that would be a conversation between Snowy and Tari for sure. Oh, um, okay, excellent. Uh, Serena, Kaisel, whoever wants to go next. Uh, Soda, if you want to go, you got it. Uh, okay. Uh, oh wow. Okay, well, I've got the page in front of me, so let's do this. Um, <clears throat> so. We stop. We somehow stop Mephistopheles, and assuming uh, uh, Tari saves her brother, uh, first and foremost, uh, in addition to finally recovering Runequill, I make amends with Kaislor because Tari sees her like a big sister, mm-hmm. and she understands the consequences of her actions, and more than anything, it broke her to see the price of her mistakes and she's not she's not proud of it and just wants to be better the second thing i'm going to do is act as a rather damning witness against maros Dusimus and any of his uh associates that might have been exposed by the investigation by the clovis concord before you continue with that you are 100 percent called into uh witness and testify against the former Marquis Maros Dusimus, uh, in front of the entire Clovis Concord, um, including the newest member, Tusilla Latu, um, the newest Marquis. Party. Um, within this, uh, um, court, sorry, I can find the word, um, it is revealed uh, by other witnesses that uh, Tarina both invoked uh, a power that was not hers uh, and essentially burnt a man alive uh, and your own crimes are called in on you um, however many people come to your defense uh, and you are let off but um, with a warning that should anything like that occur again within the Clovis Concord's domain will be put into jail. And I great and I gratefully accept that mercy and thank the court. Um, but Maros to Simis with your testimony and um uh, Regver just immediately turning against him um, it is uncovered that uh, they both were uh, agents of the Myriad and were in fact using Regver's logging company to ship hollow logs with people inside of them to sell into uh, slavery and other bits of business um, the logging industry of uh, Tusoa takes a major hit on this, um, but it eventually gets back up and running under the full and complete uh, watchful eye of, um, what's his butt? The other guy? I can't remember his name. <clears throat> One second. So notes. Yeah, sometimes you just can't remember everything off the top of the dome, you know? Be like that. Uh, I don't know if I remembered everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was, uh... I'm joking. Uh, no, yeah, it was right. Um, under Akamu Majest, uh, he takes over complete control of the, the logging industry of Tusoa, and business eventually proceeds as normal. Um, and uh, with this uh, uncovery um, of myriad activity, um, the Clovis Concord and the Duendalian Empire put forth an effort to fully and completely crush the Myriad and all of their businesses. Uh, I remember there was another name mentioned as a co-conspirator. Does he get exposed eventually, too? Uh, no. No, he does not. Okay. Uh, what about my uncle, Theron? 
when you eventually go back to your family's home, um, it is well kept. It is beautiful. The grounds are in the process of being kept uh, by a few gardeners um, who you don't recognize. They probably did not work there when you were a child. Um, they have not seen the Lord of the Keep in a while. Um, upon entering, uh, you would find the interior slowly melting, uh, completely iced over, but the ice is melting and uh, everything is water damaged, uh, and you will find your uncle's corpse uh, encased in slowly melting ice. Uh, a look of shock and horror on his face in his last moments. A scene you would have seen if you guys had gone to Runequil instead of going back to Amon. Only it wouldn't be melted. I... Uh, if, if you did manage to save Cornelius, he would tell you that he murdered your uncle so he could have Runequil. I would just give him a hug and do what I was taught by a friend and forgive him. And it takes a while. It takes a long time for Cornelius not to not only beat himself up, but also first of all come to terms with the fact that time flows differently in Kenya than it does in the Prime Material Plane and his age has rapidly caught up to yours because of that. Um, but also just all the horrors that he has seen and committed. It takes a really long time, but eventually he begins to recover. I, I would definitely tell him that he, that he looks just like father. The first couple of times you do that, it, uh, it, it does not ease anything. In fact, it probably makes it worse, but eventually he comes around to, to not minding hearing that. Alright. Uh, uh, picking up on that point, um, uh, over the course of the rest of my days, one thing I would do is eventually create three simulacrums to open up clothing outlets in Iman, Gordon, and Port de Mali. Uh, specializing in ladies' garb, tabards, banners, cloaks, and boots. Uh, whenever I had a free m free time, I, w I would uh, travel either around the Concord, around Exandria, helping the common people with problems as, as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would study numerous languages, Abyssal, Dwarvish, Giant, Gnomish, Halfling, Infernal, Undercommon, Sylvan. Uh, with permission from the others, uh, write a novel, not a novel, write a book about uh, our unlikely journey. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, around 819 PD, Tari ends up single-handedly slaying a young red dragon that menaced a village near Castle Runequil. And becomes known as Tarina Dragon's Bane. Oh shit. Oh, fancy. and you do that with Runequill. Yep. And what you should now see. Dude. That's awesome. Uh, she eventually ends up getting married to an elven ranger. Uh, and uh, asks Thane to walk her down the aisle as father of the bride. 
because she doesn't have anybody left. And ask Kaislor to be your maid of honor. She ends up having three children, two daughters and a son. Uh, Tharia, Charlotte, Runequill, and a twin, tw twin girls, actually. Uh, Tharia, Charlotte, Runequill, na uh, named for Thane. Elithana, Laraline, Runequill, both born in Mistar in 823 post-divergence. And a son, Calrith, Kaisor, and Runequill. Uh, obviously tend to Cornelius as much as she needs, as he needs. Um, fin using some of the finances from the shops, open up an orphanage for younger folks uh, that she would personally oversee for the rest of her life. Uh, basically, Tari's uh, ancestry allows her to live a little bit longer than most humans, but she does eventually pass away peacefully with a very large family and very content and looking forward to seeing her friends and family uh, once again as she finally dies in 946 PD. Damn. There you go. Uh, and I just want to show this to you guys because I think you might find it cool. Um, I actually put this together a, a couple days ago. Um, the Runequil family tree of succession to the time of Tari's death. Oh, wow. Jeez. Someone is asking for a link in chat. Uh, Calref, that's uh, Snowfalls, by the way, in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah no. if, you, if you want to bop that link in the chat, you can. Uh, soda. Uh, what, the, the picture? Yeah. Or do, uh, you, do you have a link, or is it just a picture? Uh, uh, all you have to do is copy the message link. Oh, uh, uh, sure, give me just a second, I'm sorry. No, that's fine, I can uh, save it and then just post it in... Uh... In the game, and they can see it. Okay. Oh, one second. Uh, and again, let the record show that Calref real name is Snowfall. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Let the record uh -huh. show. Uh Who Calref goes on to become a rather uh, valiant paladin of the Dawn Father, by the way, inspired by his auntie. Oh shit! All right, King. Fuck it up. That's cute. Uh, and. When, at the time of Tari's death, she has a great grandson named Thing. <laughs> God, yep. that is really cute. There you guys go. You should be able to see it on the screen now. It should be big, big enough to read. <clears throat> um, yeah. Uh, and Trina, there will be uh, while he sold is alive. Um. There, there will be many a play date between uh, Isolde and Thane's children and Tarina's own. Out of all of the Arcane Dawn, I mean, other than Thane, uh, Isolde will definitely want a close relationship with uh, Tarina. So. I love Hi. her. <laughs> I love Isolde. <laughs> Um, well, only one left. Uh, all right, lads. I am going to give a bit of honesty hour. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking, and I, well, one, because I'm terrible. I've never actually written anything down. But two, because so much of whatever happened with Kaiselor really was going to depend on whether or not there is even a chance that she could redeem Zephyrin. So for so long, it had seemed like such a lost cause, but I don't know if you all know this about Kaisalar. Um, she never lets herself be happy, ever. <laughs> um, so, if it had gone the way of not being able to redeem Zephyrin, she would work for the rest of her life, just doing what she's doing now, 
adventuring, fighting, helping people just more and more and more on her shoulders until either she couldn't keep up with it anymore or she died. Um, but, you know, assuming that doesn't happen. I couldn't figure out what I wanted her to do because I think she just, at least in the very immediate future, needed to do nothing. Yeah. For a long time. Um, she volunteers at the Church of the Dawn Father and the Law Bearer. Mm -hmm. um, she, at least for a bit, mostly just helps out around town, rests in the house. Um, and then I think eventually something's going to come to her where, well, obviously she'll make sure the Children of the Dawn are taken care of, the, the members that we saved in Manskine, whenever they show up, <laughs> assuming they're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> they are not. It's just a really long skip voyage, bro. It's so so long. <laughs> you guys are bopping um, all over with magic. They are they're on a ship. They are on a boat. Yeah, not even an airship, just a regular ship. Yeah. Um they will um she'll make sure they're all set up. She'll give them any sort of like not that she's licensed, but like any sort of counseling um that she can offer. And then that sort of inspires her to work in and this is a bit weird. Um she wants to work in like prison systems um and rehabilitate people instead of just locking them away in the dungeon yeah so obviously every once in a while she'll pick up the sword and she'll go back to adventuring but for a lot of it for a lot of her life she loved the fight and she doesn't want to fight anymore it's a reluctant thing but she wears the sword proudly all the time she just doesn't want to draw it you know but, um yeah. What about I, Dean? I knew you were gonna ask that, you motherfucker. Yes. Well, of to, course. To touch on that, and yeah, Eisler can make mm -hmm. her own decisions. But when Dean's story is finally over, when the Naki mm -hmm. story is over, and you guys return from Jotunheim, um, he is not there for the fight in Amon. Mm -hmm. He is not there for the fight in Vasselheim. Um. When you guys return from Jotunheim, he does finally tell Keisler how he feels. Yes. Mm. Mm hmm However, he wants to make up lost time with his own brother. Mm hmm So, they go out yeah. together to help people and to kill things. The family business. Mm-hmm. And eventually, after that's done, I guess it's up to Kaisler. He comes back to the summer. In In the good timeline, yeah. Please give me grandchildren. Thank no. You. No. <laughs> Kaisler is not fit to be a mother. No. Absolutely not. not I want an angel be bed children. Yeah, no. Come on, pretty angel children. Running I mean... around my feet as a mold. Well, no, they will be older and die before <laughs> I get to, you know. Uh, but yeah, um... Yeah, in the good timeline, yes. Because obviously this would be before, you know, whatever fate is decided for her. Mm -hmm. But assuming everything goes goes good, then yeah. Yeah. So it's so much of whatever she does for the rest of her life rests on the ghosts that follow her. Mm -hmm. And none of that healing would ever really start instead of just repressing and working and moving. Um, unless she... She climbed Everest, basically. Um, one of your biggest projects, because I'm assuming this is in Oman, because they have a very huge mm -hmm. uh, prison. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your first projects you're assigned to is Zephyrin, because mm -hmm. he turns himself in to answer for his crimes. And -hmm. because he turned himself in, he was given a stay of execution. And instead, is to spend the rest of his years... Locked behind bars. Yeah. Um, his second is never found. Huh. But that could be a thing for Keisler to do, or you can just let it go. Yeah. I mean, maybe. It depends. But Zephyrin turns himself into the council and gives them the full 
and entire list of crimes that the Children of the Dawn have ever committed. But he doesn't put the blame on anyone else but himself. Yeah. Yeah. She... And it's hard for her at first. This is the man she's run from for so long after a youth filled with just gore. Um, <clears throat> it's hard for her to do it, but it's the work that she has to do in order to help herself. And it's something that I think subconsciously she didn't think was ever going to be possible. But now that the opportunity is presented to her, she's not going to pass it up. She's going to work with him as long as possible to not fix it, but make it better. Yeah. I have to be honest, I love <clears throat> that ending. <clears throat> like, the fact yeah. that he is the biggest reason why she is where she is, but she never gave up on him. Yeah. And the fact that she would be given a chance is amazing. I really, I really yeah. love that. Yeah, that's but why I'd had, I'd had than... such a hard time thinking about it. Because, like, I really couldn't see any other way for her to go if she couldn't do that. Yeah, and and also and also, like the predictable, I'm the evil guy. There's no redemption. Yeah, that is much better. It's kind of like I loved the choice that who who really would redeem himself and sacrifice mm -hmm. himself because it's the unexpected. Everyone is expecting Zephyrin to be because he's been so bad. So, to so have, bad, yeah. To be like the kind of evil that would never be redeemed, but the fact that he was doing that with the self, like with the conscious that maybe he was doing good, yeah. And he realizes it and regrets it. That yeah. validates Kaiselor's entire storyline as well. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Without it, it's like the purpose that she's driven herself towards for so long. Because obviously, she'd intended to run from him for the rest of her life, and she was just going to work, redeem, yep. die. Um, but to have been faced with that, to have confronted that, and then for it to have failed, it would have it would have broken her. Yep, yep. That's that's really cherry on top on the storyline. Um, Vazrum and Sam have a romance. Oh what? yes, what? yes. No, Bayless. Um, yes. But both of them are so fucking toxic oh, in the relationship. Uh, Vela, sorry. Too many V names. It's my yeah. fault. Yeah, sorry. That's hilarious. Vela, uh, Vela, and Sam have a relationship for a while, uh, but they are so <laughs> toxic together in a relationship that it can never work. Um, that is so funny. However, it does not stop them from occasionally having booty calls. Um, yes. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, obviously she keeps very close with <clears throat> Vela's being like you know the last member of her family. I am curious though. Mom did die on the ship, yeah. Uh, in your sessions with Zephyrin, uh, it is revealed that he did, in fact, um, have Velas kill your mother. Yeah. Because she uh, was starting to, much like you, pull away from the Children of the Dawn a bit and was creating a splinter cell, and he couldn't have that. Oh shit, no way. Goddamn. Um, your father your actual father, uh, mm -hmm. doesn't know how life is outside of Children of the Dawn. Um, mm -hmm. He tries and probably fails to establish some sort of relationship with both you and Valus. Yeah. Um, but depending yeah. on if Keisler wants to pursue that or not, he will probably just die of old age alone somewhere yeah for for Kaiselor, which is weird but like Zephyrin had always been her father mm -hmm. as far as she'd ever concerned mostly because that's how he'd presented himself but um but she's she's a good she's a good person at her core and like while it's never gonna be like a, I invite my dad over for Sunday dinner yeah. She's not just going to let him walk off and die somewhere. It's as much as she works with the rest of the people who she's seen commit atrocities. It's it's the same thing. So while while he'll never be her father, he'll he could be a 
somebody, you know? Yeah. Um, Valus fucks off and does his own thing for a while. Um, I love that for him. But eventually <laughs> he does return to Amon um, to live with you, because he doesn't know how to live by himself. Um, yeah. And to also uh, help you at the prison. After a while. After several years. He's the years. best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go out, go out, have your fun, and then come home and hang out with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he keeps in touch every day with the Sending Stone. So. Yeah. Yeah, once I'm filthy fucking wretched a hero of Tal'Dorei, I buy as many Sending Stones as I want. Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Just use all your big cash to commission a... Uh... A, a sending stone a of conversation. An, al yeah. an unlimited sending stone. Yeah. Unlimited Kessler stone of extended direction. Yeah. It's like, hey, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Yeah. Give me oh. my cell phone, damn it. One thing that I forgot when I was talking about uh, the thing, once once he becomes the spirit guide, once he goes and becomes, he would try to search for Calrath and whatever spirit world made or elves go until they are called, try to mend the relationship. With his mentor, before he's called to action by one of his descendants. Yeah, and you are greeted with, um, just a scowl, and uh, and you know, indifference because yeah. Calrath. Yeah. He would have scolded him, look what your choices did, almost did to the world, and I had to pick up, but eventually he would thank him because a lot of what Thane became was because of Kalrath, so. And then he would go and be completely different to his descendants. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's like the father that, like, the, the person that had a shitty father, and they want to be totally different. Yeah, that would be him mm -hmm. with his ancestry. But his ancestors, his descendants. Um, eventually, Kaiselor Danaki would return to Amon. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, would make babies. What? No, he doesn't want children. <laughs> um, no kids. And would want a relationship with Kaiselor, but he leaves it completely and utterly in her, her as her decision. She's. But he no longer keeps it vague. <clears throat> he explicitly states oh uh, i love that for him <laughs> his feelings for kaisler so. speak your truth um yes yeah she's in a better place she's healthy she has accomplished the things she needed to accomplish in order to ever allow herself to heal and be happy so nothing is holding her back anymore there you go no babies though it would be so cute, the little uh, angel baby. Kaiselor is a mom? Oh, that kid would have so mm. many problems. <laughs> well, uh, with your permission, Hazel, could Kai be the godmother, godmother to Tari's children? See, godmom I could do because you just get to hand them back when you're done with them. You're like, nope, nope, nope. You come to me for like a day and you visit and it's fun and cool and then I give you back. No more. <laughs> Heck, maybe you end up tutoring Calrith. In the way of a power. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, if it's never going to be as intense or as rigorous as her own training was, obviously, but she knows a lot, and if that's something that he wants to pursue, there's no better person to teach him. You know, violence isn't always the answer. Now pick up your sword and spar me. <laughs> Don't be like your mom. Don't barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, I'm, I'm assuming... Kaisler's keeping the arcane abode out of everyone. Like she, it's probably going to be her. I mean, house. probably, yeah. Um, Dorlana, She'll eventually. Dorlana does stay on, but continues her training. Um, and uh, eventually, um, after many, 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 many years, um, actually becomes the captain of the arms of Amon. She takes over. Oh for, my god! She takes over for Captain Kelly uh, Vazra. I am so proud of her. I'm so Look happy. Look at her go. I'm so happy. You better be following the Moonweaver. I'm going to fuck her up. She does follow the Moonweaver, actually. <laughs> does she still have uh, the thing? Mm -hmm. What thing? What thing? The thing that Snowy gave her. Bright oh, Shadow? the glaive, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah she, Bright she's, Shadow, the thing. She, she's never seen without it. I love this for her. That's so adorable. Yeah. 
Keisler does most of her work in Amon, but obviously with uh, with increased access to teleportation and so you, you know and magic. You guys, and you guys were doubting me beating her up was a oh bad absolutely method. Absolutely, Whoa. it was a terrible. It was a terrible method. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Thane would have visited Kaiser whenever she was an Iman and he had a yeah. chance because, you know, high level wizard can't go anywhere. So it was like exactly. uh, yeah. Also one the thing that I had planned for uh for Thane was that I would have gotten the mansion, the magnificent mansion oh, at some point. Shit. And the magnificent magnif magnificent mansion would be a small version of Mathor with little oh, instead cool. of room Room, rooms we would have little cabins and and each one of you would have a little cabin and stuff like that i had that's started awesome. to plan on it it would be like a, God, a mansion is such a cool spell yeah um so yeah i mean after that uh danaki would help kaisler whatever she needs maybe go on adventures um yeah exactly yeah um, listen she can adventure for fun no more uh, yeah. <laughs> no more terrible i have to work myself until i die mentality uh, occasionally it uh turns into uh look who's coming to dinner and uh you have to sit through the awkward sexual tension of vaz uh, valis and sam <laughs> uh, yeah kaisler's but... always the one that gets the door <laughs> Yeah, Still, even for somewhere. the rest of her life. Yeah. <sighs> um, um, and every once in a while, she will go visit the um, the grave of the uh, arbiter, arbiter Brom yeah. Goldhan. She hadn't gotten a chance to go see it yet. It is um, it, it is simple, uh, but elegant. Uh, yeah, and it is um, befitting of someone who. All of Iman, other than I think you guys, think that he died fighting an undead dragon. However, you know yeah. the truth that he was unceremoniously stabbed in the back. Yeah. But it is befitting someone of his stature. Yeah. It's um, true. Also, Danaki never proposes. Uh, it is an unspoken thing that you are just his person until he dies. Uh, Listen, Tane would hey, nag him. Hey, want to ride? Tane, every time he visited, was like, why haven't you? Why haven't you? <laughs> and then why Tanaki haven't... eventually kills him. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he just doesn't. He, you are. It's not really his thing. Unless Keisler's like, hey, we should get married. Tanaki's going to be like, mm, uh, this is fine. Uh, this is no. fun. Why, why fuck it up? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We can commit, but like not too much commitment, you know? Yeah, exactly. The more you talk about it, the scarier it gets. What if we just live together forever? <laughs> yeah. No, but but Thane would be happy that those two bumblefucks would finally get together because it's like, God damn it, everyone sees it. Why are they not doing something? He would be very happy. Though. Yeah, well, it's because Kaislor can never allow herself any happiness. <laughs> It'd be like that. It was never going to happen. But she does find happiness. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, after. But what I'm saying is is that the whole reason that Thane and everybody had been so frustrated, like, it's right there! Everybody yeah, sees it right there! Because Kaisler was never going to allow herself any sort of anything. Yeah. But, you know, here it be. And from Zephyrin's end, uh, your sessions together shift from you trying to rehabilitate and help and shift into just daily casual conversations like, yeah. you, like you would have with uh, your father, essentially. Exactly. If Kaiselor would allow it, uh, at some point when Thane is visiting, he would have wanted her to take him to Zephyrin, and he would have wanted to listen. Yeah. Um. Just listen to his story and and what brought him to do what he did, because Kaiselor was a very big eye opening for him in many ways, and especially in that. Uh, fight with the druid and and how he went around, yeah, trying to help and trying to redeem those people. He was, it was mostly for Kaiselor's sake and what she made him see. Yeah. So at some point, when he was visiting, if she's living in their cane abode, he would ask her uh, if if they could visit Zephyrin, and he would yeah. sit down and just want to listen his side and see if he can learn because. He eventually would have the the desire to be the main leader in Mathor, and 
you need to understand all sides of things. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it would also be some sort of recognition that he understands more of what Kai was doing than yeah. he did. Absolutely. And, like, obviously she's, like, once you get the proper clearance and everything, because, like, while she works there, I'm assuming she doesn't, like, have the ability to just be like, yeah, come on in. Yeah. But um, yeah. anybody that needs to see him or hear him for their own healing she would try and facilitate that he hurt a lot of people and so even if they want to just if that's something that could be arranged yeah. to come in and say their piece if that would help them move on yeah he didn't hurt a thing directly yeah. but it was something that he would want to do because yeah of the fact that kaiser lord taught him yeah in many ways things that he would have never like he would have never Considered. even thought, yeah. considering that in that scene when we, we helped the druid and all the, the people, he would have just put an end to it because in his mind, if you that, that was no way, this, this was the only way. And she taught him that, you know, not, not always it has to be like that. So he would have yeah. wanted more also as a thank you to her. Yeah. Uh, as well, that he Absolutely. would want to understand Zephyrin. And to understand Kaiser. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Arcana Pansophical eventually tracks down the clone of Krenzak. Oh, shit! Oh, Can gosh. I get to rehab him, uh, too? I would totally... It, Tari had an, I, an invested interest in keeping an eye out for him. Yeah. Um, he would be brought in to finally answer for uh, his attack on Iman. Uh, and the killing of many uh, guards and uh, civilians. Um, and if Kaiselor wanted to try and rehab him... Oh, um, absolutely! She could ask the council to not kill him, uh, mm -hmm. and instead let her work on him as well. Yup, yeah, this is how she fills her days. Um... Without his artifact, the Draconic Abolisher, he, he is much easier to um, detain, so... Um, yeah. And he is a, a tough nut to crack. Um, mm -hmm. I would say you probably spend several years mm -hmm. trying to rehab Krenzak before you finally get even a little bit of a crack in his demeanor and personality and all mm -hmm. the things afflicting him but eventually you, you get that small crack and with further work you can continue uh, but, that is so good <laughs> um, but he does eventually uh, because of his age because he is an older uh, yeah. entity uh, die in the prison um, mayhaps redeemed, mayhaps not. Who knows? Yeah. Um, That's incredible. Wow. The Children of the Dawn you saved, um, Micah and the others, um, mm -hmm. eventually build a shelter. Uh, dedicated to the Dawn Father to help uh, people displaced, homeless, um, poor, hungry, literally anyone who, who needs a little bit of help. Uh, yeah. In the Temple District, uh, near the the Dawn Father's Temple. And it helps many, and it lets those members of the Children of the Dawn also gain a little bit of redemption for the horrors they have caused. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Micah continues to try and have a uh, close relationship with you, Kaiselor, until eventually... I love Micah. Uh, he does also pass away, because he is older. He's the dad Micah that gets to come, so home, much. come over for dinner on Sundays. <laughs> yeah. That's the guy. I love him so much. He's the best. Trying to 
find other NPCs uh, that I might have missed. Um, oh, if you guys did it, which it would have been, mm -hmm. it would have been a lot of uh, um, to kind of like go, 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 go. Kind of, it would have been really everything happening so fast. Um, if you guys did it, um, the uh, a few giants from Jotunheim, uh, the Valkyr, all the allies you have made uh, would have also aided you in the final fight against um, Mephistopheles. Um, the, oh, I uh, love this. The centaurs from down south. Um... Atrados also, if you would have contacted him, would have also helped mm -hmm. you guys. Um, and speaking of uh, Matrados, he eventually finishes his quest. Learns that that goblin was just a shithead and he does not die. And I knew it. I had a feeling. For the most part, uh, probably lives the rest of his days in Craghammer with the love of his life. Also, about Matrados, one of the things that Thane would do would visit him. Tari too. Yep. And just stay there and mm -hmm. try to know who he really was. Instead of the the cursed guy that he was. Because they had such a clashing relationship for all the time. Instead, they were like... It was very funny because the, 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 the dynamic between them was like... They were the ones that butted had the most, but when they got together, they did great things. Um, he would have done, he would have tried to track him down and s just sat down to know who he really was and um, try to mend that bridge and maybe call him his friend. Um, and just because fan service is fun, uh, the Arcane Dawn, honorary members of the Council of Taldore would have met the other honorary count council members of Taldore, Fox Machina. Oh, Fox hell Machina. yes. <laughs> oh, hell yes. Oh. Sans Vax. Yeah, yeah. you know, naturally. <laughs> Friendship service in Whitestone for Atari's yeah. business. Yeah, listen. Yeah. One thing I just that want I every wanted... character of mine that meets Percy to be best friends with Percy, yeah, even though right? he would detest all of them, which is my new running trope. <laughs> One of the things that uh, throughout the things the 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 years because they would still have around five hundred years more to live. Now that he's not adventuring and not risking his life, he would have at least five hundred more years ahead of him. Every time that he realizes one of you is old enough that you would be passing, he would go and try to spend time with you. Kind of like uh, what uh, Captain America did with Peggy, and uh, the yeah, 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 and the Winter, I mean, Soldier. Uh, the Winter Soldier, and he would be there, like uh, he would be there holding Tari's hand when she passed. He would be there uh, if it's snowy allowed, just maybe not when they die, but when they're about to die, just to you know reminisce about. Uh, things that they did he would be there with kai once she passed he would be there with the naki when she when he passed and he would be that constant person that would see the end of his friends lives and honor them uh, sadly until... you, you wouldn't be there when the naki passes because uh, unfortunately he stabs himself on a nail and dies of tetanus I'll oh fucking kill you. Kill yourself. <laughs> Shut Seriously. up. I will fucking kill you. I will eviscerate you. No, Come no. on. Come on. Uh, that is a supernatural reference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, would, but, would, would Thane be there for Tari's husband because he's yeah. an elf? Yeah. Um, well, he's an elf, no, because he, 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 her husband will probably die after Thane. Because yeah. Thane, at this point, Thane is 320. As he's already much, an older as much guy. As he can be, anyway. Oh, you mean not not for his death? Yeah, he would he would have kept contact with her husband. I mean, I thought you meant when he died it was like Thane's like, gonna like die just before him. Like how to cope him. with the fact that the person you love is gone. Yeah, he would sit down and 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 share the experiences that he had with his old and 
At that point, he would probably be in Maythor. He would not leave because he would have been taken as the elder, like, of his people and take the the lead in Maythor. But he would invite uh, her husband because he knows what it is like to see the people that you love dying. And he would have been able to help him cope. The other thing is he would have left Sahendrian to whoever of his ancestors who would still be alive by the time like his great 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 grandchildren he would have made a point to have this family his family around him because he had never had his whole life good part of his life was at, going after his daughter um so he would have wanted his grandchildren his great grandchildren whoever came in the bloodline to be around him and he would leave sahandrian to one of them and that person would probably be the one that he would attach himself to as a guide. Eventually, when Thane's life does end, he, uh, he meets one of his great-great-granddaughters named Amine. Yeah, oh, I hate this. That's so cute. Um... As maybe she's the one. Maybe she's the one that he attaches himself to as a guide. Maybe. Yeah. That um, would be sweet. It's all of my issues that I can remember and have written down. Um. It's gonna be an awkward conversation in the afterlife uh, when we all see Snowy. Hey, how did you die? Tripped and fell. Gonorrhea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember other NPCs that we met. Uh, this is and completely three. just being funny. There's no check-in needed. But Kaisler goes and sees that fortune teller lady like once a week. We become ah, best friends. Penelope. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Penelope. I've been thinking oh. a lot about Penelope. <laughs> what happened to Herb Girl in uh, Lyringorn? Yeah! Oh, Herb Girl! Oh my god! That Shadow's <laughs> old future wife. Yeah. She, I'm joking, Elsie. She remains in in Lyrengorn. I mean, she has a shop there. Whoa! Whoa! No! Our our f favorite captain! I forgot his name! Ico! 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 Yeah. Oh, he, he remains an airship captain and... Oh, gosh. Continues oh. his his work until he also eventually dies. <laughs> Yeah, but Do he we... comes to dinner on Sunday, right? He comes to dinner every oh, time. Oh, oh, I forgot to ask one thing. Do we? Uh, uh, can I ever track down Varaxi's uh, sibling and tell him what happened? You can. Uh, and he thanks you. Um, and appreciates that you took the time to do that. You actually track him down in the Savalier Wood. Um, and I, I even show him that I, uh, the sword <laughs> honors memory. Yeah. Name, named in her honor. Oh, I just remembered something. The wizard, I gave that amulet, the cursed amulet that you reused on Friday. Did he attune to it? What happened to the, to that guy? What happened to the amulet? Um, Is that a spoiler? <laughs> he, he, through his curiosity, uh, did in fact attune to it. Stupid. And eventually became part of it. Oh my god, is he the one on Is he the one? He was the oh one my god. Was yes. to He's the one that's talking to Asami! Oh I love god. this. I oh, love this for so him. Yeah. You um, ruined that man's whole career. I ruined that man's life! Oh my I ruined his life. It's, it's not every day you get an <laughs> artifact from a betrayer god. Yeah, exactly. Uh, god is, is that the wait? Is that the wizard that was in the village in uh, the Neverfields? No, that's the wizard in uh, Marquette. That okay. when we went there for oh, different wizard. Yeah, so Thane promised him the medallion, uh, like um, to, to help. He was like, uh, yeah, for, for locating his old, he's like, I have a powerful artifact, you're a collector of artifacts. And he was like, so happy because he was, he collected ar artifacts. He is the one that is talking to Asami! Oh my god! <laughs> was. Was talking was, to Was, yes. Yeah. I love this so much! Uh, by the I way... I ruined that man's life, oh my god. 
who tipped off the white dragon when we were in the Neverfields? Who tipped him off? Uh, that would have been Krenzak. He tipped. Oh wow! Yeah, because yeah, he wanted the. He wanted the you sword. guys. He wanted you guys to he fight the dragon to, to and weaken kill it him. so he yeah. could kill the dragon. Yeah. yeah, he was a little bastard. Yeah. Or... I'm reattuning. Lane says I'm reattuning tomorrow. No, you're not. No, you're not. Oh God, um, I love that. Yeah, shit. I, I didn't. I didn't think that was a secret. I, I feel like I played that one pretty, pretty open. Yeah, Krinzak yeah. absolutely did... uh, tipped the dragon. Yeah, off. that one's. Yeah, Krinzak, that one's... Krinzak was like, "Hey, yeah. bro, uh, these people are setting up an assault against you. You might want to, uh, you know, do something about it." And uh, so yeah. And then he just stayed a little bit away, so when the dragon finally died, he could uh, absorb the soul. That That's hilarious. Turd. Yep. Um, man. Yeah. Trying to think of other NPCs. Oh, oh, the, Matt. The, the, the herbal, have so many. The, the herbalist in Lyrengorn, she, she just stayed Lyrengorn. Like, there's nothing really. She's more so to say great, about her. though. I know. Uh, she, she was one of those throwaway NPCs that was, she was just quirky. a shopkeeper. Yeah. She was memorable, so I, I had to ask. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yep. So oh, oh, because I'm a wizard. Eventually, I will build a fucking tower in Maythor. There you go. Every wizard because has wizards to have, a tower. have towers. Exactly. Yeah. It would be like a Viking styled tower, but it would be a tower. I, I feel at this point that everyone did something. Like marvelous and you know noteworthy in their life, but Snowy, Snowy did not <laughs> anything noteworthy at all. Hey, maybe he, got, he maybe and he, he bullied did. a man out of his business. Yeah, maybe yeah. he did or didn't put a dick in his mouth. We don't know. Yeah, yeah I, don't I mean, know. also Snowy killed two dragons during the course of the campaign, so like maybe rode two dragons. My bad. Maybe uh, yeah. maybe Snowy just becomes a dragon slayer. Who knows? Maybe that's how he dies. Trying to one v one a dragon. Are, like he probably said a lot of stories, very exaggerated too, in the diamond ta in that diamond nest tavern. Yeah. Exactly. I hope you don't mind that latitude, Tim. But I would think Tari would eventually become powerful enough to cast ninth level spells. So I'm thinking, okay, solo slaying a young dragon is something she could potentially do by herself. A young dragon, absolutely, for sure. Oh no. Thane is not gonna adventure any any time again. He's done. Yeah, yeah, he's he's done. done with his shit. He's, he, he's done with his shit. If he ever gets the itchy uh, soul, it's like nope. nope. Eventually, uh, Snow will change the name of the Diamond Nest Tavern into the Thane's uh, Thane's Disdain. Tavern. That's hilarious. Thane's Disdain. Oh gosh. Wow. Thane's Disdain. Or Thane's at that point, something like that. Yes. Like at that point, Thane is so fucking done with it. He's like, yeah, I'll do whatever. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I just want to live my life with my wife until she dies and raise my kids and then raise my grandkids and then raise my grand grand grandkids and become a, you know, he doesn't care. He would probably even go there and say, yeah, I'm the guy. Yeah, it's me. That's me. I'm that's on the me. title. Yeah, yeah, I'm on. Yep. That's me. Um, you the, will see now why he named it that way. <laughs> the sign above the uh, the bar or the, uh, the entrance is just Thane face palming. Yes, without a face, just like a elf, uh, like a white head, yeah, well, open guy. A painting that I overpaid for, completely mm -hmm. overpaid for. The permanent, mm -hmm. permanent yeah. uh, programmed illusion of Thane, just like with like the constant different faces yeah. of disdain. Yeah, yeah. And that's... it would go, yeah, that's me. So funny. That's I'm the guy. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think we touched on everything. I think we, I think um, we did. Everyone, the Arcane Dawn for many generations to come will be remembered in the annals of history, much like Vox Machina and the heroes before them. And eventually that prestige will pass to legend. Can I be the one person to befriend Percy because we're both grumpy kids? God damn it! Not fair! <laughs> I want to be Percy's best friend. Get him one day. No. <laughs> um, you can certainly try. <laughs> Tari would th be think, averse uh, to trying as well. I think Percy has all the friends he needs or wants. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, but in the sake of 
Oh no, he would be dead by then. He would probably do 3Ds with his children. Uh, like opening uh, relationship, diplomatic relationships with Maythor and Whitestone. That would not be with Percy at all. No. <laughs> uh, with permission from uh, from the ruling authority in, in Guardan, Tari would try to establish diplomatic relations with Whitestone as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. the Clovis Concord already have relationships with Whitestone. Um, oh, okay, then, she, yeah. then she'd just go visit. Yeah. Yeah, the thing with Maythor is because the way I wrote, because that was my creation, and, and Tim just, yeah, and Tim just uh, allowed me to do it, and we built upon it, is that only the elves of Singord knew that it existed. So. Well, the elves that of, was. Uh, the elves of the coastal city also knew about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the elves of that part, because yeah. they were the ones that uh, Maythor elves would you know, trade with and stuff like that because they needed to. Mm -hmm. But uh, the point is, with all the adventuring and meeting new people, they would go like, yeah, no, maybe maybe there is a there is something to gain here for uh, making the world, not the world, yeah, the world, tell Dory know that we exist. Um, uh, but it's yeah. Like, it's like your own Wakanda arc. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Pretty much. Like I say, I don't have original ideas. I just inspire myself on hey, things. Hey, you know? Me either, too, dog. Right? I was going to place the final big fight in Vasselheim. Like, I don't have an original yeah. thought in my brain. Um, like, the whole Maythor culture was based on Vikings. It was a bit of a Wakanda hidden place. I don't have original ideas, you know. I just... You like that. Um, well, yeah. Oh, Panda, Panda has a question. Oh, absolutely. Panda. Yeah, I guess if chat has questions, you guys can ask those. We never really interact yeah. with chat because I like to keep it kind of immersed, if you will. Um, but immersion is over. But immersion so Panda is asks, over. will would these events be canon in the next game if Vasselheim is destroyed? Uh, well, Vasselheim wasn't destroyed. In this, in this timeline we're going with, the happy ending timeline. Um, no, it, Vasselheim was not destroyed. Um, because that would have been fucking hilarious uh, if it was destroyed from the yeah, new campaign. Yeah, right? Good um, lord. The new campaign is going to take place so far in the future, the events of this game is not really going to have any implications um, on it. Um, uh, not only does this new campaign take place hundreds and hundreds of years in the future, uh, it's in an entirely new age. They're no longer using post-divergence to denote uh, the year anymore. Um... Which, if you guys tune in next week, you will learn about all that. Um, what was Kishan? Uh, did the Arcane uh, never meet them? Um, probably, no. They probably would have never met Kishan Zara's uh, uh, child. Uh, but they did meet Kishan Zara, and I actually got complimented on Twitter yes. <laughs> for my mm -hmm. depiction of both Kishan yes. Zara by... Yeah. It. By Mary Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth yes. Elizabeth, yeah. and yep. uh, and what's Will his face? Friedel. Will Friedel. Will Friedel. Will Friedel. Yep. Yeah. That was the high. Yeah, no, high, high, cool. high praise. That was, the, that was the high end. Yeah. That was the high end. That was the highlight of my that entire was the highlight. existence. Mm -hmm. Um, it was so cool. Yeah, I'm glad they. Uh, Senpai noticed me. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I I love the compliments, and they <laughs> seem they seemed so happy that. Other people were using their characters from Critical yep. Role in their own games. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah. No, I have that. I have that tweet screenshot. I didn't save it on my phone. I'm such a nerd. Also, uh, uh, uh Hazel, because yeah. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but my character would be above half or half orc lady. Oh or yeah. Can't... Yeah. Oh my god, I love this for you. <laughs> I still keep that. I'll keep that idea. Keep that locked up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but thank you guys for uh for, for allowing me to uh to just fucking end it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, hey man. I'd be like that. You guys for understanding and being good players. Um mm -hmm. uh just so I'm aware uh, you're planning on shifting the time already for the next, for next, uh, next week. It's not next week. Eastern? Yeah, next week it's it's uh next week will yeah. be Wild Mount, uh, time. Okay. Nine p.m. Hell yeah on that. I'm sorry. Okay. 
I'm I'm sorry, this means me not running away like a crazy person, running away from work like a crazy person and trying to speed up my work on Thursday. So I'm down with that shit. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But yeah, it'll be uh, be a lot of fun. It's definitely going to... It's going to have a whole different vibe from what people are used to seeing me DM. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Um, oh, Orakosh, thank you so much for your follow. Sorry, I have notifications off because I turned them off when we do D&D. Um, yeah, well, I hope you guys were, were happy with the ending. And Yeah, uh, that was great. Good stuff. I have to say I wanted because this was I think this was like one of my very first committed D&D games before I found all of this I had a lot of bad experiences or games that didn't finish or games where the DM ghosted or anything or things like that Uh, I'd like to thank you all for almost because it's going to be almost three years uh, of being there and becoming friends because I feel like this has trans like transcended the gaming thing and I consider all of you guys part of my life now. Yeah. Uh, I will still be with you guys on the other games. Uh, I won't be here next week. Uh, but I'd like to thank all of you for being part of this and for becoming my friends more than just people that I game with. Absolutely. And I, I, I've been here from day one on this. I remember session zero, mm-hmm. and it seems like it was yesterday. And we've been through so much in this game. People having to, having to leave, and new people coming in, and and until we settled in this group, over a hundred sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and yeah. it's been so great because. This was all, like, when I started playing D&D, this was the kind of thing that I wanted. And having found you guys made me very happy. And I consider all of you friends now. And one day, when pandemic's over, I'm going to ca- get on a plane and we're all going to fucking get together. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. party! A- a- an in-person session sounds very Yes, fun. like, we'll do on one fucking shot, sitting down, and... Just rolling yeah, our own dice. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh yeah, I actually got a setup for that shit. Yeah, um, we, yeah, we get the band back together. Yeah. Uh, but I also want to take the opportunity to thank you guys for being excellent players and uh, create making this campaign memorable and fun. Um, not only you guys, but the the original players who are no longer here, uh, Matrados, um, you know, LC. Um, Thaladin, uh, Jumba, all those original OG players. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Not you, great. Fuck you, you suck. Um, but <laughs> everyone else, yeah, all all the players, uh, you guys rock. And, it's been a journey. And you it's been it. it's, it's so strange. This has been my part of part of my life for so long that it feels like I'm saying goodbye to to children that are getting away like going to college and having their own lives it's such yeah, a strange... right? yeah it's very weird it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's been a journey and I I hate to say goodbye but uh, but, it's, but it's time um, it is time but yeah Hey, at guys. least we all didn't have the chance to die. Guys, we got to experience right. the best time life. We have the best <laughs> We could have yeah, we That would have sucked. Like, literally, this was us doing the mods, downloading the mods from Mass yeah, Effect 3 so we can have the best ending. ending. That's yeah. fucking hilarious, and this makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we modded the shit out of this so we yeah. could have the happy ending. Um, but yeah, it's been, a, it's been a journey. It's been fun. and uh... I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. People in chat. There, there are fireballs raining from the sky. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Guys, and tomorrow for revolution. Uh, let me let me sing the praises. I am the Freedom Friday prophet. <laughs> oh yeah, it's already going down for a while. Now. Who is crazy and why is that Hazel? Yes, Leah. I love it so much. <laughs> it's the only thing I think about. But um, for the final time, as far as the Arcane Dawn is concerned. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, uh, and 
Goodbye, Internet. Bye, Internet.